we looked at this idea in the last video about what a one-sided limit is. Uh, so the one-sided limit, uh, it's just like a regular limit. It is the value, just like always, a y value that the function approaches as you approach a given x value. That's no different. That's what we've had. It, that's just basically what a limit is. The y value of a function as you approach a given x value. Now the difference is for a one-sided limit is that we're doing this last part from either the left side or the right side. What we can call this the negative side and the positive side. So for example in this uh, graph we have here, the limit of f as x approaches 3, but then this is the x part from the left side. If I just did in general uh, the limit as x approaches 3 of this function, not from the left or the right, well, I'd be approaching two different values. That can't happen, we said. That limit didn't exist. This is a limit that does not exist. In this problem, though, if they want to know just from the left side is negative 1, well, that's what it means. We're looking from the left-hand side only. The y value you're approaching is right here at negative 1. The way you write that, it's still a limit as x approaches 3, but from the left-hand side, the negative side is negative 1. We can do the same from the right-hand side. What do you think this is? 3 and then that plus sign. These are like little, almost like the plus and minus there are exponents, really. So this means 3 from the left-hand side, this means 3 from the right-hand side, and that value we set is 2. So if the two sides are different, that's what we said right here, is that the limit as x approaches 3 of the function does not exist. If it's the same from the left and the right-hand side, it will exist, and if it's the same, that's what the value will be. So, with that in mind, let's just jump right into these. If you think you got a handle on this, go ahead and pause the video and uh, give it a try. But we're going to do left-hand side, right-hand side, and uh, right on equal with it. Go ahead and pause if you need to, and then we'll come back and look at it. Okay, the first one here, from negative 2 from the left, Negative 2 from the left-hand side looks like we're approaching a y value of 1. Negative 2 from the right-hand side looks like we're approaching a y value of negative 2. The left and the right-hand limits are not the same, so the general limit cannot possibly exist. Number 4, the limit as x approaches 1, well, I'm approaching the same thing from the left and the right. That's good. So the value there is just what the y value looks like it's approaching, which is 1. Uh, zero, it's the exact same thing. I'm approaching from the left and right, and it looks like that y value is negative 2. Uh, this one here, limit as you approach positive 3 from the left-hand side. So here's positive 3. Right here, as I approach just from the left-hand side, it looks like I'm approaching a y value of 5. Yes, it's actually the same from the right-hand side, but we didn't care about that. Uh, the reason they put that on there, though, make sure you're not saying x approaches negative 3, it's x approaching 3 from the left. Uh, the limit as you approach negative 1, again, doesn't matter from the left or the right in this one, actually it has to be both of them, and it looks like I'm approaching a y value of negative 3. f of 1, right here, careful, these last two are function values, so it's not where we're approaching, it's what the actual dot is, old school algebra, that's a y value of negative 2, f of negative 2, where is the filled in circle with that? It's up here at positive 1. And this last one is kind of fun too. Uh, again, I challenge you to try this on your own and give it a try before uh, looking at the answer coming up here. So go ahead and pause and give it a try. All right, to solve all of these different values. So first, g of 3 is equal to negative 1. Well, that means I just have to have a point there for sure. However, the limit as x approaches 3 needs to be at positive 4. So that means I should be approaching this open circle in some way. So we'll take a look at that there in a moment. We'll finish that one up. We also know the limit as uh, you approach negative 2 from the right-hand side is equal to 1. So I should be approaching just from the right-hand side there. So it says here, this last part, g is increasing from negative 2 until positive 3. Well, that's good. That means I need to be increasing uh, from that part. That's good. Uh, and now here, this last part, the limit as you approach negative 2 from the left needs to be bigger than if you approach negative 2 from the right. 
So what does that mean? Well, that means that I can't be approaching the same thing. That wouldn't work. Um, I can't be approaching something down here. That won't work. We want uh, negative 2 from the left to be bigger than that. So maybe we're approaching uh, this value of 4 or maybe even 5 or 6. doesn't really matter. Uh, but i got to approach uh, something higher than that. Um, the only thing I have left to do is I need something over here because part, uh, what was that, part B said that the limit had to equal 4. That meant from both sides. So I need to at least connect that and make it approach from both sides. So let's double check everything we have. First thing, g of 3 is equal to negative 1. That's good. The limit as we approach 3 from both sides has to be positive 4. I've done that. As I approach negative 2 from the right-hand side, I need to be getting a y value of 1. That's good. g is increasing from negative 2 to 3. That's good. And the last one, the limit as you approach negative 2 from the left, which I have here as 6, needs to be bigger than if you approach it from the right, which we did already, which was 1. So that is good. We've met all of our... Uh, Demands, we are satisfactory. There's one-sided limits.